What's up guys, it's here from the Stray Pipes. I just got the PSVR2. My first time playing this song. Yeah, Sam, I just got this today. Let's go, let's go. On launch day, went to Walmart at 6.50 a.m., 10 minutes before they opened, waited in line with somebody who wanted to get a snow brush because nobody else seemed to want this. So I got this, the Horizon Edition one which is a really cool game. This cost me $8.19 Canadian plus tax. In USA, it's $5.99 US for that same bundle. And I did get the PSVR1 on launch day. So I figured, you know, follow up with this one. And then I did post a picture of this to the gaming subreddit and it got a ton of upvotes right to the top. So I figured you guys would want to see a review of this. Got my Civic Type R. I also review cars, retro video games, snowblowers, lawnmowers, stuff like that on my channel. So subscribe if you like that or the straight pipes if you like cars. Some of the specs and differences. This one is 4K HDR where this one would kind of be like a little bit pixely in some games, not the best res. And then this one has a whole bunch of cables. Like look at all these cables I had to use. So you gotta have a camera built in, HDMI in, HDMI out, too much stuff. This one connects with USB-C, one cable for the whole thing and then the old one, you had these like nunchuck things, which kind of sucked. Couldn't move around, no joysticks. Check out my hands. If I got my thumbs on the joystick, I can see my hands. They're fist, and if I take thumbs off, I guess the camera can see what my hands are doing. These new ones, we got the new handle with the joysticks and like a bunch of buttons. And then this one had a camera that watched you to see what you were doing. This one has cameras built in, so it scans the room around you which is like the wildest thing. Scan the whole room and it's like, this is your play area. You're good to go. We're gonna stand still or move around. Uh, reset play area, create new play area. And we just look around and it scans everything. And it lets me know. Okay, so we're in a new room. And then we can adjust that we're at the ground. We can see our height or something. Or they're telling me I'm five foot eight, six, seven, just under five foot eight, damn. If I leave, it goes back to my augmented reality. This one also has eye tracking. So once you set it up, when you're looking around, it knows where your eyes are looking, which this didn't have. So now here's the eye tracking. I'm not moving my head. Then as for adjustment, it adjusts very similar. You know, you slide it in and out, tighten the back. But then this one also has this dial here that moves your eyes in and out so you can get like perfect vision. And then I used my vision glasses with this. So I scratched up the lenses because they bumped. This one, I'm just using contact lenses so it'll be much better and I won't damage the lenses. And so far with contacts, it's been really, really great. And if you get close to people, like they move away. They're like, they don't like it. Look how good these graphics are. Can you, can you bump people or not really? Yeah, see, they move away if you get close, like that's cool. So the games that I've played, so far I played a bunch of Horizon Call of the Mountain. Really fun, using the joysticks to move around was really intuitive. I tried the mode where you just like use your arms to run and gesture control to move, but I didn't like that at all, it was pretty overwhelming. Oh yeah, that was a sweet climb. Being able to climb everything was nice. Staying in the zone, you can do standing or sitting, so that's cool and you can like change how far your zone goes. So you do need a bunch of room, but you also don't. You can do like sitting mode, it'll just be less like interactive and stuff like that. And I guess since you're running right to the PlayStation, you don't actually need a TV, which is cool. I guess you could like play this in the middle of an airport if you wanted, which I guess would be kind of weird, but like you could. So that game I'm gonna finish, it like just a really fun launch game that came with it. And I've been having a good time with that. Uh, Storylines, I guess kind of all right, whatever, but the graphics are so crisp. Like you can get right up to people and it looks so perfect. Like you can look inside people and see the back of their mouths and stuff. So that's kind of fun too. And you can screen record like the share factory thing in PlayStation with VR, but it like, glitched out on me a couple of times. So I'm not sure like how perfect that is. But yeah, that first game is good. Then I also played this game Pavlov, which is like a shooting game. It was pretty fun. There was multiplayer. <laughs> Got him. Let's go, let's go.
<laughs> Fun, you go on to chat right away and you can talk to people, which kind of surprised me. I don't even know where the microphone is. Yo, I don't know what I'm doing, man. Can I steal your gun? Can you steal your grenade? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, what's up, guys? High five. You're not on our team, by the way. Oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, have fun. And then I also played just like random player versus player versus, which was pretty fun. It's a little tricky to reload the weapons. You got to do a lot, and I blew myself up with grenades a bunch. Man, is there aim assist on or something? Can we turn aim assist on? How do you make it steadier? But it's cool because you're in VR and it feels like you're actually there, except that one isn't like fluid left and right. Like when you click left or right, it just jumps, which at first I was like, this sucks. But then I got used to it and it's like, wasn't the end of the world. Then I also downloaded the Star Wars game, which I'm going to play. I got a NFL demo and then I got GT7, which I'm going to set up with my PlaySeat race chair later tonight and see how that goes because I'm very excited to be fully immersed. Uh, do the bus stop, play a little lift. Oh my god, this gra the graphics are so sick. It's one of the things about playing like car racing games is like it always feels so fake. But being in it, I think will be a lot more fun. So I'm very, very excited to do that. So uh, yeah, I think overall, way more immersive, steeper learning curve, but way better than the PSVR 1. Is it worth it? The shadows on the gauge cluster, so good and realistic. If you can afford it, yeah, I think so, because it's so cool, but I guess you gotta get a PS5 first, then this. PS5s are hard to come by, everything's expensive. So I could see like the price being kind of like a drawback. And I've never used any uh, VR on other systems or on computer, because I'm like console for life. I like plug and play, I don't like PC gaming at all. So I've been just, I can't, I can't imagine myself being any happier than this. And um, would I recommend it? Yes. If you can afford it, recommend it. Are you gonna get tired of it? Maybe, I don't know. But if you do, lend it to your friends. And then, are there a lot of games out right now? No, not really. But will there be more games? Yes. And you can do cooler games here than you could there. And I'm sure a lot of these PSVR 1 games are going to get ported over. And then it'll be fun. Like, you might have to pay for it again, but like, whatever. It's companies. They're making money. Like, the controls are different. I can see why, I can see why porting a game over is a little tricky because like having these joysticks and stuff now, you can do so much more than you could here. So, you know, whatever. That's that, that it's not backwards compatible. But yeah. Really enjoy it, excited to keep playing. I hope you like the clips of it and my little update. And uh, if you do like this, subscribe to my channel. I do tech reviews, game reviews, vintage toy reviews, and then subscribe to the Straight Pipes if you want to see car reviews, because we got 1.6 million subs there too. Thanks for watching, guys. Good job, PlayStation VR team. VR2 team. Well, VR1 was good too.